When Cadet Kelly premiered on Disney Channel in 2002, it seemed on its surface like any other coming-of-age movie designed to get preteens warmed up for easier army recruitment in high school. Because the movie features team activities, heteronormative gun worship, and a bland love interest in the form of a human cheesy breadstick named Brad, the straight might have thought that this movie was for them. But those kids gay enough to draw back the camouflage curtain were treated to a film that at its core is a sapphic tale of companionship between two young girls and the early blooms of adolescence. I'm talking about lesbians, for those of you who are still catching up. This movie forces us to stand at attention and get a much needed eyeful of uniform wearing, pop punk listening, ribbon dancing girl power. While I might have missed it while watching this movie as an 11 year old, adult Nick could not help but notice the coded queer symbolism hidden behind all the military reverence, afterthought of a romantic storyline, and an unforgettably spunky dance off between two exotic birds. So come on ladies now, let's get in for Formation because we are marching off to boot camp in a Cadet Kelly flavored installment of Clip Breakdown. Hello television viewers, my name is Nick. Thank you so much for joining me once again on my channel for another installment of Clip Breakdown. This is a playlist where we dive into our favorite movies, TV movies, YouTube videos, and other media on the internet. And we give it the military inspection so that I can decide if each individual component is worthy of an honorable discharge or if we gotta court marshal it. Court marshal it, <laughs> court marshal it. Today we've got a really highly requested video in the form of Cadet Kelly, which is honestly a movie that flew under my radar because I wasn't enough of a lesbian to understand its importance, but now I'm enough of a lesbian to get everything. I know all the world's secrets. So let's get into it, but first make sure you give this video a big thumbs up if you want to see even more decom clip breakdowns like this. But most importantly, if you're new to my channel, I would love to have you click that subscribe button right down here. That way you never miss new videos from me. I upload a whopping two videos every week. Can you believe? So turn on notifications and you'll never miss when I have a new video marching onto the field to shoot you with the musket. <laughs> also, I've got a Patreon where you can unlock exclusive clip breakdowns and watch parties and other great stuff, as well as merch, like my new design featuring the television viewer logo. Much like the recently covered Cheetah Girls, this movie takes place partially in New York City, but uh, they're really shooting it in Toronto and Ontario, Canada. But that doesn't stop us from opening on some iconic New York City B-roll, baby. Roll that stock footage. <laughs> That's the Flatiron Building, a historical landmark for the district. And if you just went down the street to the right there, you would find my former therapist's office, which is an emotional landmark for my 2014 mental health crisis. I actually called New York City and asked them if they could hang a plaque in that office to commemorate it. And they were like, you actually owe us some tax payments. So I was like, this is not worth the trouble. The movie opens on our girl Kelly, a spunky yet clumsy 14 year old who attends a Manhattan art school where they do cool things like this. <laughs> I love that this is an accredited high school and all the kids are like, well, time to go take my final. Look at me, coach. Do you think I have what it takes to go varsity? He would be like, I've been teaching this class for 30 years and you're still the gayest kid to come through here. You guys, these cost $5 on Amazon. I'm telling you, <laughs> so much fun. You can dance if you want to. You can leave your friends behind. Look, it's like I'm in control of the world. Cause if your friends don't dance and if they don't dance, you ain't no friend of mine. Girl, Kelly knew what was up with these ribbons. Get you some ribbon dancers. So this was um, basically all the students have to do a project about their family. And that's the framing device for this movie. Here's their creative art teacher. <laughs> and I couldn't have choreographed it without my best friend, Kelly. That was uh, fabulous. Kelly's school was like, look, we know the drama teacher has been biting sophomore girls, but he also has tenure. So the best we can ask him to do is just chomp on a pencil like it's a horse bit. Although she's changing her mind a lot, Kelly has decided she wants to make a documentary about her mixed family. You can tell she gets a lot of inspiration and some of that trademark clumsiness from her dad. Ooh, sweetheart, sorry that your dad humpty dumpty himself to death in front of the whole school. The dad is consistently shown to be falling down and very clumsy, yet he's always climbing all over things. Like, can we maybe leave the beam work to someone without a balance disorder? Let's get the dad to an inner ear specialist. It's never further explored. It just almost kills him every minute. But Kelly and her dad obviously have a very special relationship. They're always using their cell phones like lightsabers and being like, we love our cell phones because we talk to each other on them. 
That's important <laughs> to remember that for later. In fact, both of these things that they just set up with the dad play into the story later. So I think it's good writing that they, you know, leave little breadcrumbs for stuff that's gonna pay off later. And more so than the Cheetah Girls, I think these exterior shots look more like New York City because they have tons of extras. Dad, my family divorced alone, yet having a terrific time. She said, there's my dad, single, alone, divorced, unmarried, goofy, poor, ugly, and I love that about him. He's doing great. Taxi, taxi. Oh. I have to do everything. Those cab drivers are like, Gwen Stefani, I love your work. Between the music and the costumes, the pop punk vibe is so real with this movie. That ribbon dancing song at the beginning, I'm a one girl revolution. Tell me that's not hear queer and get used to it. We go right over to meeting Kelly's mother who is a divorced mom. And she also is dating this general guy who we see in a photo. But Kelly's mom and dad seem to still have a great relationship. Ex-husband. Yeah. Ex-wife. Yeah. That was good. Kelly always seems really excited about her parents' divorce. Like, we get it, your dad has a sex addiction. You're really proud of it. Kelly's like, if I don't have a complicated home life, how will my ribbon dancing ever be as good as that girl at school whose little brother drowned? But before Kelly can get her art under control, she needs to get her um, spatial awareness under control. That's what I think. Kelly, Kelly. Way to go, Kelly. There better not be one shard of broken glass in the sushi tonight. I love how in the widescreen version of Disney Channel movies, they're like, yeah, you're gonna see some crew members. I don't know what to tell you. We weren't planning for the widescreen revolution back in 2002, okay, homegirl? Or maybe this version is revealing that Kelly also has an unseen grandfather who crawls around on the floor and licks up water like a dog. And I choose to believe the latter because that's the magic of Disney. Oh, this Kelly, what are we gonna do with her? But she did save the fish, so don't worry. I saved them all because every fish's life is sacred. Except for those little ones at the lake that nibbled the dead skin off my toes. They knew I was saving that for the mice under my bed. Just a couple minutes later, we meet, um, <laughs> I got stage right just now. <laughs> Forgot my lines. Um, uh, we see, we, ooh, ooh. girl, I just want to play with my ribbon. That's what's up. So just a few seconds later, we meet the mom's boyfriend. He's very straight laced. You might remember this being Gary Cole from the movie Office Space and other movies such as television and movies. Hi. Okay, this is a lot of sexual energy for two people who are dressed like an older family member just died. Like that is the grief stricken banana clip hairstyle of great grandma's funeral, but she's climbing up on him like a flagpole. More clumsiness from Kelly. She like bashes this guy's nose with her camera cause she's that stupid, but it's not that big of a deal cause there's like big news to be had. I don't know what Kelly was referring to this man as. She like did not call him any name for however many months her mom has been dating him. What should I call you? Uh, Joe. Sir, your choice. Hmm, I'm gonna call you Sir Joe, cause I think it makes you sound like a hip hop artist from Miami. Anyway, can I try holding your gun? Kelly actually really does go for that surname though. <laughs> how about Sir, Mom, and Sir? I like it. I love how open these parents are about their power play. The mom is like, and Kelly, when Sir moves in, you're gonna hear some light paddling coming from the living room at around 7.30 each night, but don't worry about it. Later on, Kelly and her mom are out shopping and talking about the wedding while also discussing the fact that Joe just got a brand new job after retiring as a general. Do you think you just leave it on and sleep on your back? Love, happiness, what could possibly go wrong? So, what's he gonna do? Some things uh, are gonna change. <laughs> Like. like we're limiting the number of twirls you can do within the span of a single conversation. Like why are you Beyblade right now inside this Bloomingdale's? She said, hey mom, what do you think about this hair color? <sighs> do you like a new lipstick? What about the army? <sighs> oh, I just knocked over the plant. <laughs> no. Okay, don't be sad, we got this. Okay, crisis averted. Everything is not as bad as it might have looked. And um, you know, I think the important thing to remember here is that plants can't feel pain and don't have memories. So I'll probably leave Rhonda in the sun for a few weeks just to like really recover from that accident. But you know, so if you don't see her, I'll put some, I'll put another plant there in case you guys get lonely. Anyway, what were you talking about? Oh, Hilary Duff spinning around so much. Like they made her such a freewheeling character. They told Hilary Duff, your character's like a little bit ditzy. And she was like, got it, my character's a little bit 
dizzy pirouette. But the surprises don't end there as Kelly's mom lets her know that well, you're gonna be moving and you're gonna be changing schools cause your new stepdad, basically he got a job as a principal of a school that Kelly's going to attend. And here's more info on that. Very caring, very structured. Turns out the structure is like a barbed wire fence that you have to crawl underneath in the mud. The mom is really, really sugarcoating this. Cause then we get the big reveal. Military school? I love the sound design on this movie. Like that little tire screech to be like, what? I love movies that can let us actually be in the scene rather than just playing goofy string orchestra music throughout the whole thing, like Lifetime and Hallmark movies do. You don't need the score to drive home every punchline. Like sometimes you can find other ways to do it. I will say this inciting incident of the reason why Kelly gets sent to military school feels a little off base for me. I would have maybe changed it so it was more directly related to her actions. For example, maybe the plan is for the mom and stepdad to get married, but she's gonna stay at her Manhattan magnet school. But because of her clumsiness, when she was shooting that documentary video, she like messes up both her mom and her dad's work stuff. So both of them are like, oh my God, Kelly, what are we gonna do with you? And the dad is like, you know what? I can't watch you close enough here in New York. You have to go with your mom. So and that way it's kind of like a punishment that Kelly has to go to mid military school in retaliation for like her clumsy behavior. Cause the way we have it here, it's sort of like, you're doing great, everything's fine, but we're making you move for no reason or no fault of your own. They sit in desks. <gasps> No. Yes. Sometimes I wonder if it's a coincidence that all the most iconic Disney Channel movie lines are also the ones that were drilled into our heads by the trailers and the promos when the movie was released. Just think about it. Cause every time I watch one of these Disney Channel movies, I'm like, I remember that line, but I only remember it from really watching the commercials before the movie came out. Anyway, you can see there as Kelly's packing up her suitcase that she's folding up this blanket that becomes a big part of the story later on. I wish that this would have been a time that they could establish like her connection to the blanket and be like, my dad gave me this or he bought this in India, whatever the case is. But after that, Kelly's packed up and off to George Washington Academy, the military school she's now gonna live at. Listen, I don't care how much first day of camp B-roll you show me, I'm never gonna enlist in the army. Like the group showers sound fun in general, but yeah, I, I need a lot more time away from other people. I think joining the American military right now sounds like being stuck in the worst group project in the world. It's weird for Kelly to see her stepdad being a general. I would just be out the door already once I had to sleep in a room with a hundred bunk beds. Like, I'm sorry, if my roommate is 60 girls, we're done here, we're done here. Imagine the shared bathroom situation. I could never. Luckily, we never have to get into that at Cadet Kelly. And the weird lodging situation, see, and like loss of privacy. For all of that, Kelly seems rather well adjusted. She's like, well, I'm gonna show my parents that I really wanna make this work. And right off the bat, Kelly starts finding her allies. Hello. I'm Carla. No, you're Hazel from Degrassi, AKA most stunning of queens, outshiner of Paige, and healer of Middle Eastern prejudices. I wanna just let Kelly know that you lucked out with your bunk placement, cause this is the baddest in the room. For those who don't watch Degrassi, that is Andrea Lewis. She was also in a Drake video. We love to see it. Oh, and I don't think I mentioned it, but Hilary Duff plays Cadet Kelly. We knew that though. Anyway, now the moment we've all been waiting for. This is really the point in the story where Cadet Kelly can start to be interpreted as a queer love story. I tried to do some research research into the screenwriters to see how likely it might have been that Gail Parent or Michael Walsh, both the writers of this, would have put a gay storyline secretly into this. And I don't think it's out of the realm of possibility. Gail Parent was a writer on Golden Girls, Confessions of a Teenage Drama Queen, The Carol Burnett Show. All of those have really strong ties to the LGBTQIA plus community. So it all works with my fantasy that she knew what she was doing. Regardless, the lesbian feelings start heating up right when we hear this quote Cool girl talking about the hardest, meanest girl in the whole camp. We got Captain Stone again. <laughs> Who's this Captain Stone anyway? The meanest 16 year old in America. Uh, nice try. The meanest 16 year old in America is that old snapping turtle that took my toe off. And I don't know what it is. Maybe it's all the perfectly smoothed military buns, but this scene is just radiating with enough queer energy to pan fry a slice of tofu. So everyone's like, oh yeah, Stone's the worst. Um, and also she has the cutest boy in the whole school. Even though they never really show Stone and Brad really being an item. Interesting how the love interest of this movie is not on the poster and is barely featured and doesn't have many lines. Hmm. She's probably gonna be going with Brad again this year. Brad? He's the best looking, most perfect boy around. Why not me? 
<laughs> girls, girls, we won't all be able to date Brad. We know for a fact his dad doesn't like Jewish people. That girl's like, well, she's probably gonna be taking Brad. She like threw her leg in this weird way. I can't help but be like, that was a choice. Here's that blanket that I warned you about, which to me is the most important piece of fleece in all of television history. I wouldn't do that if I were you. It's not regulation. It's just a blanket. It's not like anyone's gonna see it but us. This sounds like an actual conversation between the screenwriters when they were hiding a gay pride flag in their Disney Channel movie. Like if that blanket were any more of a beacon for gay people, it would be singing When I Grow Up by the Pussycat Dolls. It's not regulation. What if they see it? No one's gonna see it. It's just a blanket. Oh, we see it all right. I see it with my big gay eyes. Hello, I put my glasses on and I see it. It can't be a coincidence that this flat, that this blanket is like identical to a gay pride flag. It could have looked like anything. They had a lot of rainbows in her room and I guess you can always chalk it up to her being an artist. So that's how these dog whistle things work. We know, you know if you know. And if you don't know, have fun serving chicken or fish at your straight wedding. I don't care. Okay, Kelly, you can officially be done putting the blanket on the bed now. Like, we get it. You went to art school, but you need to show some respect when a butch girl enters the room. And that girl is Stone herself, played by Broadway icon Christy Carlson Romano, also a prolific YouTuber here on YouTuber. And she really gets into this character in this movie. She plays it very straight. I mean, like, plays it. she plays it very mean. I'm sorry. Did I accidentally snatch this ratty old thing away from you? My caretaker when she takes off my wig every night. It seems like Stone has it out for Kelly and Kelly has it out for Stone from the very first meeting. Mm-hmm, very meet cute. You're on my list, maggot. I love how Stone is withholding and calls Kelly a maggot the whole time and queer girls were like, this is the best love story we've ever gotten. In the early thousands, the bar for representation was non-existent. If your movie had a gay person in it, they would die of AIDS or get beaten with a bat within the first act and P Flag was like, great, we're finally in movies. I also love to think of Cadet Kelly as the story of a girl like kind of rebelling against don't ask, don't tell. The policy that prevented gay people from serving openly in the military. Some things are just gonna have to change around here. And we'll start by playing my Melissa Etheridge CD while we all get ready in the morning. Every time this blanket is on screen, it is just screaming gay rights in my face and I love it. I think every blanket should scream gay rights because I'm always cold and I'm always gay. Cold and gay, same-sex marriage. The rest of the first act is set on establishing Hillary as the fish out of water of this new military school. Sweetheart, does this look like the French military to you? They're teaching us how to lock babies in cages, not deliver the perfect baguette via bicycle. Carla quickly encourages her to hide the unregulation accessories under her hat, which she does. And then when Stone comes up to her, she just embarrasses herself even more by having never heard of military time. And then when she salutes, oh, this embarrassing faux pas happens. That's a visual representation of how I feel whenever I open my mouth to talk inside a barbershop full of straight people. Like some men will hear my voice in their safe space and they'll look at me like I just put on a wig and started singing Starships. Let's go to the beach, each let's go get a wave. They say what they're gonna say. Have a drink, cling down to Bud Light. Bad bitches like me, it's hard to come by the Patron. Oh, yes, I'm in the zone, in the zone. Oh, let's go get an own. Is it two, three, leave a good tip. I'm blow all my money and don't give two. <gasps> I'm on the floor, floor, I love to dance. Right before, like, Hillary gets, I keep calling her Hillary, right before Kelly gets in huge trouble, Carla's like, I'm gonna teach this maggot how to do military everything, I promise. Ma'am, this cadet volunteers to teach the maggot military protocol and terminology, ma'am. Do it. And tell her about the crocodile I wrestled. That's how she discreetly tells people that she's clogged another toilet. Here's where Kelly gets her first glimpse at Brad. Is that Brad? Oh my gosh, he looks just like a rock star. And I would know because I've been this close to NSYNC. Ah, oh, so you've seen classic rock gods like Lance Bass and J.C. Chazé. I live for the way Kelly totally dominates Stone in this because Carla's like, hey, that's Captain Stone's man. You don't want to mess with it. But Kelly has just learned how to salute her higher up. So she's like, I'm actually going to go ahead and mess with it. She sees that Stone's about to walk over and say something to Sean or Brad. So she's like, I'm going to go over there too. <laughs> Thank you. 
Kelly said, you know what? I think I'm ready to steal your man. Thought I would unpack my bags first, but I'm actually ready to stir shit up. Or some say that Kelly is trying to prevent Stone from pursuing Brad because she's like doing this performative straight crush in order to hide her lesbianism. I obviously choose to believe the gay version and I think you should too. If you believe the straight version of this movie, you're so tacky. <laughs> my new thing is calling people tacky. I don't know what it means, but it's like, you're tacky. I just know it when I see it. Tacky like some fucking poster putty, baby. Do you guys believe that I knocked over this plant for the 30,000th time? Kelly just totally jumped in front of Stone to salute her man, and then she turns around and does this. Kelly is such a boss. Like, how did she just dominate Ren Stevens like that while also keeping it cute for the schoolyard? We stan. We stan. We stan Kelly and her regulation beret. And afterwards, Kelly just walks it off like, mm, well, I love this place. I thought you'd be happy about how quickly I was learning. I'm a boss ass bitch, bitch, bitch. Carla cannot even close her mouth. She's like just aghast at this masterful use of military protocol for petty drama. I'm a boss ass flag, 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 wave that flag. Guys, could this be any more fun? Look how it makes a perfect circle over my head. It's a rainbow, I'm dancing under the rainbow. Watch me knock this thing over again. Right here is the thing that I keep knocking over. I'll circle it for you. I'm a boss ass flag, 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 ribbon, twirler, twirling ribbons, yeah. Now we go into the portion where Kelly has to do military school. Like, oh my God, it sucked enough learning math in high school. If you were teaching me about Napoleon, I would have walked into the nearest creek and just become a swamp monster. Here, just south of Mont Saint-Jean, the Napoleon foolishly tried to sp Can this wait? It would be dishonest of me not to tell you right now that I am a conscientious objector. <laughs> Did that girl just say she doesn't support the military industrial complex? How is she going to pillage the earth's resources? Kelly also learned that there's a welcome back dance happening where the girls get to wear nice dresses and actually be, you know, themselves for once. And it's that upcoming Friday, but we can tell, and also Kelly notices that Carla doesn't really have the items, the nice looking clothes to wear because everyone's showing each other her dresses and she just looks a little left out. So Kelly's being super sweet. So she's like, hey, let's go for a walk and just talk. So it was nice. Control. Careful, Kelly, you do not want to piss off the NRA. It's just a bunch of angry white men who still think the British are coming and they're weird sausage-handed adult children who keep them alive. Yeah, I'm coming for you, NRA. You're on the Nick list. You're on Nick's hit list. You will not silence my rainbow blanket. Disney said, don't worry about it. We just put guns in our movie all over the place. Don't worry about it. Around here, that is gun control. Don't worry, they can't be fired. We switched to replica guns after the ninth or 10th campus shooting. I don't remember. Fun behind the scenes fact, these rifles that they're using are not regulation. They're actually plastic so that they're not as heavy. The real our rifles are actually heavy. So it's like, ouch, you have to hold heavy stuff too while you're twirling? Not me. Kelly meets her new stepdad on the field. Where are you young ladies going? Home. We got some dresses for the dance fight tonight. Sir? Be sure to pick out some nice ones. And if any of your clothes feel like a man roughly my size has tried them on recently, that's all in your imagination. Or I opened the wrong suitcases, whatever you're gonna believe. Back at home, Carla gets to meet Kelly's mom. Mom, this is Carla. Hi, Carla. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Never forget that this is, above all, an Andrea Lewis appreciation video. Her smile makes me want to become a military wife. Oh, Andrea, I'll clean your boots in my bra or whatever. Another kind of fault that I picked out with this movie is Sis. It's 110 minutes long. I'm used to doing 90 minutes movies, so the extra 20 minutes doesn't include any good story in it. Like, I think it's mostly montages. They show us a montage that's a little long of the ribbon dancing. All of the montages of military training are too long. This uh, obstacle course, we spend a lot of time in it. So, I mean, those are really easy things to pad out your runtime with. And I think if you're gonna add 20 minutes to this movie, it should have been put towards building out Kelly and Carla's relationship as like new friends. Cause they talk about hanging out in scenes that we don't see in the movie, but I would have rather seen those and learn more about Carla's troubled backstory. But anyway. <laughs> Great work, soldiers. Now we'll be totally prepared for our battle against the American Ninja Warriors. Like, why are we even teaching them obstacle courses? I thought we were trying to move all of our warfare online anyway. I'm just kidding. Shout out to all of the service members who help protect our freedoms and keep this country safe. I could never. Merry Christmas to you. They show a lot of struggle with Kelly not being able to do the obstacle course. She's like afraid of heights and doesn't want to rappel down the wall. That comes up later. But her biggest struggle seems to be climbing under the barbed wire. I'm like, honey, just watch 
your hair. You're gonna get yourself ripped apart. This is where it started to feel really long. They spend like 10 minutes showing that Kelly can't do it, then showing everybody go inside, and then showing Stone come back out and be like, you're gonna practice this course all night, even if you miss the dance tonight. Like, I feel like that could have been accomplished just a few minutes quicker, but hey, what do I know? The important thing is that we end up with Kelly being alone out here with some other agent, Ramos, and Kelly's like, I'm gonna get to know the girl underneath this tough exterior. And she does. So that kind of shows that Kelly has this empathetic thing that helps draw people close to her. Back home in Ponce, we have the most beautiful stars. When I'm crawling in the mud here, I pretend I am there on the beach and the sand is soft and warm. Then I wake up and I'm just rolling around in the litter box near the radiator again. Kelly is super proud of herself when she finally finishes this rainy, muddy obstacle course. And so she runs off to tell Carla, who's at the dance. Unfortunately, things don't go great. A series of unfortunate falls happens. <laughs> How come Kelly took one false step and became Sonic the Hedgehog? And what is with this muddy slip and slide leading right up to the doorway? What kind of Oregon Trail dance party is this? Kelly said, I'm about to roll up like a wagon wheel. In a hilarious bit of physical comedy, Kelly rolls right down the hill and through the doors of the dance. Oh no, it's the ghost of that kid who died in our hazing accident. Oh no, the new girl's just muddy. Forget I said anything. Someone has to explain to me how this is not intentional on Kelly's part. You should feel very honored. She rolled here with that mud from about two counties away with military speed and precision. Kelly, I can't believe you ruined this white dress. At least Stone is gonna get tons of sympathy from everyone at the party. This is a strange thing to clap for everybody. How come even the full adult general is like, oh, what a merry mud fight. At George Washington Academy, it's all rules during the day, but at night we get muddy in the moonlight. For more info, visit goarmy.com. Obviously Kelly has to talk to the principal for this trouble she's getting into. It was not purposely or Willfully, sir, I lost my footing approaching the dance. Girl, you lost your footing approaching the summit of a nearby hilltop. And then you somersaulted into that dance like a church demon. We need you to get it together. So she's been a little bit reprimanded and she's about to go tell her mom how much she hates this school and wants to leave. But then mom drops this bomb. Like we are done with surprises, mother. Maybe you can include me in your life plans next time. We're gonna have a baby. A, ba a a baby. Yeah. And I'm sure I'm gonna love this baby, but I will always love you longer. And in the event that the baby and I don't really click, it will be joining you in military school next semester. We've already bought it a tiny little metal bunk bed. When Joe comes home, he congratulates her about the baby. And I think Kelly starts to realize he might not have all of the care it takes to be a loving dad. Congratulations, big sister. A handshake? He's like, I was actually trying to hit you. I just have really slow joints, but uh, sure, congrats. List of things to do. Help Sir understand his new fatherly role and try to convince the military to let people use their own blankets. I had to do everything. Just remember, this was back in 2002 when a lot of military members had to hide their rainbow blankets in order to serve. And they had to sleep under the oppressive rule of those ugly green heterosexual blankets that smell like piss and make fun of me in gym class. The next day we're at an inspection. Okay, but for real, how hard is it to conceal your f***ing blanket, Kelly? If everything in the room is regulation green, it should be even easier for you to notice when you've got your vibrant rainbow pussy flapping in the wind. I'm trying to keep this a secret. You're trying to get caught. Of course, Stone is like, mm-mm, mama. That's terrible. Now she's gonna have to go back to the $5 bin at the fabric store this weekend. Again, I love the symbolism of Stone rejecting the gayness of her feelings for Kelly and ripping up the blanket. But fit, like in the actual movie, from what we know as just an audience member, I wish they could have built in more understanding into how this blanket is special to her. Like if it was something her dad gave her because she's always missing her dad, something special for that she made in art school. I needed to know more about why the blanket was important other than just like, something that she likes. <laughs> so all I can know is that it's a gay flag and it's a gay flag and everything is gay. And if it isn't gay, it should be. You guys, I'm reducing my screen time on my iPhone. I only use like two hours of iPhone on average a day. <laughs> Kelly knows right away that she's going to get revenge on Captain Stone. So she takes those beautiful paints that her mom just gave her paint for the baby and she sneaks into her room at night. To me, this seems like a type of physical assault that would probably get you kicked out of any school, but whatever. <laughs> I 
I would be the first girl in that dorm to be like, oh my God, what happened? Can I touch it? It looks so weird and plasticky. Don't you just want to scratch at her hair there? I love the way that looks. I want to peel it apart. I want to eat it like Twizzlers. It's weird. Kelly's not just going to get away with this gross injustice. We call it a court martial. I feel terrible I didn't get anything for you, ma'am. See, I'm gay for men, but I could still feel the romantic tension of that encounter, like burning in my military wife uterus. This court martial is really bad news. It puts um, the stepdad in an awful position because he has to sentence her. Don't go too easy on her. Maybe not too hard either. This is the job I've wanted all my life, ever since I was a kid here. Why does Kelly have to crawl through the mud and jump over walls just because when this guy was a kid, he got some weird feelings when he sat on his G.I. Joe? Like, that's not her fault. There was very little care, I feel like, given to completely uprooting Kelly's life. Like, they didn't really worry about how she was going to adjust to going to a military dormitory school after being at a freewheeling art school forever. Maybe we shouldn't have come here. Mom, you never asked me if I wanted to come here. The mom is like, why are you acting like we're punishing you? It's just a strict boot camp after a lifetime of finger painting. Mother, why is everybody's life suddenly ruined just because you love having missionary sex with Gary Cole? Not fair. So the cadets run this whole court martial process and the students decide what's up. Section. Captain, the evidence, please. <gasps> Captain Stone was the original Gorilla Glue girl. I feel like that reference will already be outdated by the time this video is up, because I am what? Not very topical. They couldn't possibly find me. Guilty. Brad, look out, that gavel is covered in anthrax. It's an old stage trick to cover books and gavels with baby powder so that it makes a big dramatic cloud of dust when you slam them. But I think they might have went overboard here. It's a little obvious. As her punishment, um, the dad, the stepdad, sentences her to having to be the equipment manager of that drill team, the people who twirl the guns, and also the team that Stone and Brad are on. So as the equipment manager, she has to clean stuff, she has to hand them stuff, you know, boring stuff. So. Call that a shoe shine. What if when he smiled, his teeth were just black with shoe polish? He said, an army man is always prepared. Urgh. Hold a little extra shoe grease in my cheek like a hamster. Like a greasy little hamster. Oh, so greasy and slimy. At practice, Kelly finally gets an appreciation for this sport she's been forced to help with. was like Swan Lake, only instead of tutus, everyone was wearing uniforms. And instead of doing ballet, everyone was glorifying the armed forces in a performative display of post 9-11 military propaganda. It was at this point in the third act of the movie where I start to realize Kelly is one of those girls that I would have been like, can you quiet down if I was in school with her? Sir, can I borrow some Spitzer? Promise to pay you back. Hey Brad. hey Brad, spit on me too. My face feels so dry and so does my chest. Sean Ashmore, who plays Brad, is mostly famous for being the guy who can turn things into ice on X-Men, but I, for some reason, only know him from Animorphs, which is not a show I even watched. It's just like the first thing I remember him being in as a kid. I would really love to beat Rawway Academy just once and I'm sure you would too. I don't mean to brag, but I always bring luck to things and sometimes people rub my head. <laughs> Okay, can we court-martial her again for trying too hard to be cute? Kelly is that freshman girl in high school who was like, the lacrosse team said they win every game that I come to, so I have to come to every game because I'm their good luck charm. Like, okay, honey, enjoy your moment. Kelly really gets a chance to prove herself at the first competition for drilling and arming and for twirling. Oh. Ma'am, I always have spares, ma'am. That adorable moment just reaffirmed my gayness. Like if I wasn't a G, I would definitely want to be an L, a B, a T, or a Q. Just as long as someone's wearing a uniform, we're in business. Do you guys want to see some majestical, <laughs> majestical gun play? Gun play? This is what I thought I looked like twirling my super soaker in the backyard at age 11. But this is what I actually looked like. Ooh. After their little performance, we see the competitor drill team and we know that they've got a little something extra extra. Ugh, I hate that feeling when you get a little piece of popcorn in your airway. Huh, huh, huh. <laughs> ah, 
What a relaxing evening of gun flinging, stomping, and abrupt yells. I've never felt more at peace. Maybe at intermission, someone wants to put a bag over my head and hit me with a fire hose. George Washington Academy obviously can't stand up to those people who are like, ha! Cause like, who can, who can shout like that? Only Rahway Academy, that's who. The problem is the exhibition phase. I mean, we need inspiration, originality, creativity. I've worked in enough corporate environments to know that that's code for we need to hire a gay person immediately. And the proof is in the fact that Kelly instantly thinks of her ribbon dancing as the solution. Kelly is the army's gay savior in my true and correct interpretation of this film. After the team leaves kind of dismayed, Kelly does her manic pixie dream girl thing to impress Brad. Brad, you're here just to keep this feeling straight when it's not. So I hope you know that. What are you doing? It's just a little something I thought would cheer you up. Do it again. And that's an order. I'd be like, wait, for real? Cause I'm really out of breath just from doing it that first time. What are you gonna do for me, Mr. Spit on it? So Kelly decides she wants to try out for the drill team. So she gives some accessories to Ramos who trains her. Again, girl, three minutes of uh, this montage, like three minutes of them practicing guns in the field. Like I get it, we needed to watch her become better. And they do show like some of it being like, no, you didn't get it. Yes, you did get it. Still think it could have been shorter and we could have used a couple of those minutes over in the building of relationship with Carla. But Regardless, um, Kelly does learn drill stuff, and so she's able to try out for the team, and her dad, stepdad, lets her know she's made it. And that's when Kelly is like, maybe you can learn some stuff too. It was a good idea for you to sentence me to the drill team. It's a great lesson for me. You have some lessons to learn too. We have a baby to raise, sir, and frankly, I think you're going to need my help. Permission to teach. Yes, yes, we all love our stepdads or whatever. Does Kelly really think this guy is gonna make the baby salute him right out of the womb? I think he probably understands that babies are almost always at ease. Meanwhile, Kelly's really starting to find her place in the military school with her time and the drill team. Team and the drill team. <laughs> Can we get a microfiber cloth and some Windex for Kelly? Cause she's spewing her mouth droplets all over this place. When the baby comes out covered in afterbirth, she's gonna be like, aw. Wait, wait, wait. This is my favorite scene in the movie for sure. It's the dance number between Stone and Kelly where they kind of have a dance off, but in like military way. So it's much better. They really got Broadway veteran Christy Carlson Romano doing the government issue Macarena in the high noon sun. Disney said, you're killing it on Even Stevens and Kim Possible. So for your next leading role, you're going to be always scowling and wearing slacks. The two girls are really feeling themselves in this private display of lesbian dancing. And um, I think this is code for them like having a romantic rendezvous. <laughs> I think we can safely say this dance off fell apart right around the time Captain Stone barked like a dog. Like we get it, your dad has rabies. But still, I feel this is arguably a very romantic scene where two women are able to freely connect with one another through dance right out in the open, even though their love is not really admitted to or allowed in this setting. Doesn't that make it even more special? It's like, this is sexual. But anyway, Brad comes up and he's like, that's the kind of creativity we need in our exhibition phase. You're gonna be partners and you're gonna do your down by the river with the hanky panky thing for the, for the war generals and they're gonna love it. These military guys are so impressed by the most basic of arm movements. I'm like, have you never seen a play before? You guys would freak out. So Kelly starts talking to Jennifer Stone about their new plans to become like, you know, the new duo of a dance. Cool ideas, huh? I'm sure you told Brad. Ma'am, no man. You are my partner. I work with you. Captain Stone just mentally adopted some shelter cats with Kelly. I think for queer people who collect military memorabilia, this was like a hardcore sex scene. So we're officially in the third act of the movie and we meet Kelly's biological dad again. He just got back from his photography trip over in the Middle East. Brunei. 
The Sultan gave me a special price just for you. You're telling me you met His Majesty Sultan Hassanal Bokiai of Brunei, the last living absolute monarch, and you haggled with him for this sequin top. I think when Miley Cyrus sang We Can't Stop, she was talking about white people colonizing. The screenwriter probably didn't research that. Like, what's a, you just said a Sultan, you're just making up words that sound racist. The dad is like, I've got a little bit of a shoot out in New York here, like, but then I'm gonna come to your drill meet. I'll be able to see you in the drill team competition. Oh, I'm just gonna get some shots in the early morning, and then it's you and me at 11 a.m. Promise? Promise. Hey, I know the fun dad is getting all the glory right now, but which one do you think she's gonna call when she gets arrested for DUI? That's gonna be your time to shine. It's the day of the meet, and we get that best friend back. Everyone, this is Amanda. She's my best and truest friend. <laughs> Carla's like, oh, so I guess it meant nothing to you when we shared that can of cold beans on the battlefield? I'm just saying, we have no scenes of them bonding <laughs> to like let us know that she should be the new best friend. Because at one point, uh, Kelly was like, hey, do you want to sleep over at my house this weekend? And she was like, yeah, I'd love that. If they could have just given us a two minute slumber party scene where we learn that little bit of drama about Carla's life, where she's like, oh, I don't have a good home life, so this is heaven on earth to me. Then it would feel more earned that Carla's mad that she's actually no longer the best friend in the face of this rich girl. Like, how much time has passed since she joined school? Is this a semester? Is it a full year? We'll never know. Only the US military could show us some poorly decorated airplane hangar and be like, look how majestic this is. Now we just need one trillion more dollars for some new computerized missile guns. The drill competition gets underway. What do the stripes on the flag of the United States of America represent? Sir, the 13 original colonies, sir. Oh, I didn't know the army had a schoolhouse rock portion. We love a trivia night. How many counts are there to a right face movement? What elements make up the Marine Corps yeah. How American is apple pie? Who said the British are coming? What color is a bald eagle's head? How many pages are in the Constitution? Why is Thanksgiving always on a Thursday? How many licks does it take to get to the center of my butt? Like, okay guys, I didn't know I had to study all of the words for this. I didn't know this was a citizenship exam, but Kelly's killing it. Sir, when rendering courtesy to an individual, the right shoulder, left shoulder, or port arms, and not information, sir. The cadet will please demonstrate. As you were. Okay, now I know I could not be in the military because even those simple commands just worked my pussy out. You're telling me all this butch queen pageantry is gonna somehow stop the terrorists? All right, president. Next up, they've got perfect scores, so they just have to really kill the exhibition phase, which is all Kelly and Stone. What was that? It's my dad. He's supposed to be here. If that had gone off in there. The whole flight would have been summarily disqualified thanks to you. My dad is the only one who calls me on it. And only when he really needs to talk to me. It's our lifeline. Well, you better hope he's dying of not enough gun twirling being in the world because that's all that's on the docket for today, sis. Everyone is kind of mad at Kelly that she could have jeopardized the whole thing, but she's really worried that her dad called and didn't answer. I'm sorry. Maybe your truest friend can help you out of this one. I wasn't thinking when I said that. I'm so sorry. I thought I was allowed to have one best friend from every tax bracket, like a MySpace top eight. You were gonna be my poorest friend. Kelly is deeply upset. She's like tearing up. She's like, no, I'm not gonna abandon the troop to her stepdad. She's like, but I'm really worried about him. I know something's wrong. This is where I think Hilary Duff's acting really shines. Like she's a good actress. She's always giving me real tears. I really feel for her. I love Hilary Duff. So um, Gary Cole's character is like, all right, let's go find your dad. Um, I believe you they'll figure this out. Your dad's more important. So they finally go to where the dad said he would be taking pictures. Remember how he's always fallen off walls and stuff? More of that. That's how I feel when the Apple TV remote slides off the couch. Also, is this man Robocop? Cause he seems to have fallen two stories onto a rock and is completely uninjured or at least unbleeding. We're basically meat balloons. You know, you can't just fall and not bleed. I'm gonna need to see some hemorrhaging. Kelly is like, listen, old man, you're too old to do this, but I'm gonna use my repelling skills, even though I was scared of it at the beginning of the movie. And I'm gonna repel down to him since we have this equipment magically here. So she starts going down the wall while we see the rest of the team doing their drill stuff to great aplomb and they're cutting back and forth. 
Okay, I think we can relax. It seems like he was just taking a cat nap. Also, I love how this guy had enough life left in him to make one phone call and he was like, let me shoot a message off to my 14 year old daughter, see what she can do to help. Bro, do you know about 911? They're a little faster. <laughs> I know she said they only call each other on that cell phone, but the phone also works for making emergency calls, I assume, right? And I guess not. This is just a two way radio. Regardless, Kelly manages to make it all the way down to her dad and then the helicopters come and rescue him. My dad and my dad, both brave, both safe, and both mine. Okay, but now I need a remake where Kelly has two gay dads. <gasps> oh, and they can teach her how to dance for the military ball. But actually Kelly makes it back to the competition just in time to do her exhibition thing with Christy Carlson Romano. And she also makes up with Carla by being like, I've just known her longer. I don't love her more. Just like the mom said with the baby. Another good example of scripting where, you know, nothing is just an untied loose end. It all feels like it connects and wraps up very well together. And then it's time for Christy Carlson and Kelly Carlton. <laughs> not their names, to do their dance. The judges are like, wow, we haven't seen patty caking like that since George Washington himself. Do you think anyone in the audience was like, hey, that's a secret handshake from the parent trap. Ooh, bringing back my favorite instrument. They really tried to give ribbon dancing the MTV edit here. And it worked! I'll be everything that you wanna be. I'm a one girl revolution. Do you think I can do a circle and then touch inside of the circle? Like I'm doing a circle and then, ooh, ooh. I'm doing everything that I wanna be. I am twirling all of the ribbons now. We know Captain Stone is gay because this is the happiest she's ever looked twirling this ribbon. Just follow this ribbon. If you're liking what you see right now, you're gay to me. That's the test. I also love how they're like, we need something creative, but that's still dignified for the military. Like, let's join the step team. And despite this really fun dancing, George Washington Academy still gets silver. They don't win, but that's okay because the military is all about losing with honor. This next storyline though is a needless punch to the gut. If you and I can work on our routines together, there's no telling what actually there's not gonna be a next year for me. You see, my, my father got transferred to Europe, so uh, I'm moving. Oh my God, is it gonna be hard to live in Europe if you don't pick one specific country to start with? Also them needlessly moving Jen to Europe is homophobia at its finest. It's just homophobia with Mickey ears on. But despite that heartbreak of a love that never got to be, Kelly did learn a lot of stuff. The events are true. The feelings are genuine in my memoirs are finished, but I might have forgotten what everyone was wearing. <laughs> well, I was there and I was dripping in custom Chanel because I am what? Queen of the army and I shoot shotguns out of my nipples. What did you guys think of Cadet Kelly? Did this give you your queer fantasy as a child or were you like me unaware of its secondary meaning? I really think it could have been a little bit shorter, but otherwise I loved the script and I thought the performances were great. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Also give this video a big thumbs up if you want to see even more clip breakdowns just like this. But most importantly, if you're new to my channel, I would love to have you click that subscribe button right down here. That way you never miss new videos from me. I upload two new ones every week. So turn on those notifications and you'll always be the first to know when I'm ribbon dancing down the thoroughfare. Also, you can check out my merch in the links below like this. And I have a Patreon where you can unlock exclusive content and bonuses every month. You guys are all the greatest. Thank you guys for joining the military with me today. I will see you next time.